thick stories connected by a sutra. Sutra means thread. So six stories connected by thread of love, Indian culture, and primarily Narmada River. This is what we shall talk about in today's capsule summary. Hello, how are you? This is Hina from Team Tess. And today we shall speak about a river sutra. A river sutra published in the year 1993 is a collection of stories by Geeta Mehta. You know Geeta Mehta, born in 1943. She is an acclaimed Indian-American writer. And as I told you, sutra means thread. And these stories are connected by the theme of love, holy site of Narmada River and Indian culture. A point to note here is, unlike Geeta Mehta's other novels, this novel of hers, A River Sutra, primarily deals with all Indian characters, okay? All the characters are Indian in this book, right? Now, let me tell you what is the storyline. There is a narrator who is unnamed. We do not know his name. He is a retired government officer. He's a widower and childless, and therefore he decides to resign from his job and become a manager of a rest house. This rest house is on the bank of the sacred Narmada River. Now, because the rest house is at such an important place, many people, different, different people from all walks of life come and stay here. And while they are here, they share their life stories of wisdom, love, hatred, cheat, basically moral stories. They share their moral stories with the narrator. And this is what we shall know. So now I'm going to talk about all six stories in brief, but let me tell you, effective enough to help you in your competitive exams. Okay? First story, it is called the monk story. Here, Ashok is a monk. Listen to it properly. Ashok is a 30-year-old Jain monk. He narrates his story of renouncing his loving family and worldly pleasure to the narrator as follows. Ashok grew up as the son of a rich diamond merchant. While traveling for business with his father, he witnessed disturbing poverty and inequality. Okay, To his horror, his father mistreated the diamond miners who worked for them. After this, as a source of salvation, Ashok chose a religion where he will suffer the most. And which religion is this? The strict religious order of Mahavir. He follows the strict religious order of Mahavir where first he practices extreme non-violence. You know how it is, right? Even when these Jain monks, they are moving on the road, they literally sweep the road in front of them so that they don't kill any creature. They don't wear anything on their feet. They practice extreme nonviolence. And this is what Ashok does. And second, his highest level of enlightenment will come from starving himself to death. Ashok believes, he tells the narrator, that these sacrifices are worthwhile because in his renunciation of the world, he will be free from doubt. Ashok ends his story by saying, I have loved just one thing in my life, but he does not say what. After this, you know, narrator is a little confused that why a person who had a loving family can leave everything and follow a path in which he will suffer the most. And then his friend, whose friend? Narrator's friend, an old mullah named Tariq Mia, tries to explain the Jain monk story as the secrets of the human heart, which beats for the human helplessness that linged us all. And ironically, let me tell you, this renunciation of Ashok, of the world, is his celebration of the connection. What connection? The helplessness that we all feel helplessness in the hands of fate, helplessness in the hands of our life, okay? So basically, when Ashok has renounced the world, he has connected to this world with this helplessness that we all feel. Big words, but then definitely deep words, okay? With this, we come to the end of the first story. Second story, it's called the teacher's story. Tariq Mia, narrator's friend, as I told you, narrates this story of true love between a teacher and his pupil or student. The teacher's name is Master Mohan. Master Mohan is an unsuccessful music teacher who falls in love with his blind student's melodious voice. What is the name of this blind student? 
Imrat. So Master Mohan teacher falls in love with a blind Imrat's melodious voice. So Master Mohan spends all his time and energy in training Imrat so that he becomes a great singer, unlike his teacher. But this selfless connection between these two hearts is despised, is disliked by Mohan's wife, who out of revenge arranges Imrat to sing for a wealthy patron. Now what happens? After Imrat's scintillating performance, this wealthy person or the great sahib murders him. Why? So that he cannot sing for anyone else. This remember, you know, this reminds me of the story of Taj Mahal, as you know. You know, cut these hands so that they cannot build something as beautiful as Taj Mahal. So murder him so that he cannot sing for anyone else as beautifully as he did for me. That is what the wealthy people thought. Devastated by the death of Imrat, Master Mohan seeks solace from Tariq Mia by the Narmada river bank. But later, he does not know what to do and therefore he commits suicide in front of a moving train. Tariq Mia concludes this story to the narrator by saying that Mohan simply could not exist without loving someone as he had loved the blind child. That is this blind child's pure soul and voice. Nice story. Second story done, we come to the third story of a river sutra, which is the executive story. Here we find an executive who is an insane man right now. His name is Nitin Bose. Nitin Bose, an insane man, arrives at the narrator's rest house. Nitin hands over his dear diary to the narrator and implores him to read it. By reading this diary, the narrator learns that Nitin was the manager of a tea plantation which was nestled in the Himalayan foothills. Tea plantation among the Himalayas. After living a very fancy life in Calcutta, Nitin visits the tea plantations and here he submerges himself in mythical folk tales, in reading books, in reading legends about the very area, quote, about the very area in which my tea estate was situated. Nitin is saying this people by a mysterious race, half human, half serpent. So basically from what Nitin read, he read that people who are living in these tea plantations who are working with him, for him, they belong to a mysterious race of half human and half serpent. Now what happens? You should know this, very interesting. Nitin did not believe in these legends until he met a mysterious woman named Rima. Rima came to his bed every night to seduce him. Quote from Nitin, I did not know whether I had fashioned her from the night and my own hunger. But finally he learns that Rima is no mysterious woman. She's merely a coolie's wife. She belongs to the peasantry. Nitin wrote, quote, waves of disgust engulfed me and I wanted to vomit with shame. And therefore he rejected Rima and he decided to go to Calcutta again. But he felt that Rima has avenged against him. How? By catching Nitin's soul between the two halves of a coconut shell. Imagine, Nitin feels that his soul is trapped in between a coconut shell and this has been done by Rima. Believing in this magic, Nitin loses his mind and according to a tribal priest, quote, if your sahib, which means if Nitin, wants to recover his mind, he must worship the goddess at any shrine that overlooks the Narmada river. And this is why Nitin has come to narrator's guest house, rest house. He follows the rituals of these villagers because they also follow the same goddess. And finally, Nitin is cured. He feels he's cured, okay? And after he leaves, the narrator learns that the village children are singing Nitin's story. And like this, Nitin has become one of the many tales or legends associated with the Narmada River. Cool. Third story done. Fourth story of a river sutra is the courtesan story. Let's see now what is the narrator hearing. Next, the narrator meets an aging courtesan. You know, the lady who knows the art of love, but people consider them just like prostitutes. She does not consider her like that. But then, you know, she has come here. What is the reason she's come around narrator's rest house? She has come near the Narmada River in search of her missing daughter. Her daughter is kidnapped by a notorious criminal called Rahul Singh. She does find her daughter later, but it is too late. 
How? I will tell you. From what the narrator learned, the criminal kidnapped this girl and lured her into believing that these two, that is Rahul Sun and the girl, the courtesan's daughter, these two had spent their past lives together as a couple. They had married in their past life also. So they must marry in this life. He forces her to marry him. And as destiny planned, as you start liking your love, the girl also fell in love with Rahul Singh. The two started living a happy marital life. And out of love, Rahul tried to leave the criminal activities. But unfortunately, he was killed in a police encounter. Pregnant with his child, the courtesan's daughter does not know what to do. She's devastated. She does not want to return to her old life as a courtesan. She does not want to go to the life of her mother. And therefore, she jumps off a cliff, believing that the sacred Narmada will accept her in its arms. The old courtesan accepts the courtesan. The old courtesan accepts her daughter's death as a cleansing of her sins and begins the long walk home. Fifth story, musician story. Let's listen about this. A great musician or rag player visits the Narmada River with his daughter. This daughter is very ugly looking, and she looks dejected and very depressed in her life. They narrate their story of a shallow relationship they faced as a father and a daughter to the narrator. Now let's listen to the story of this musician, this great rag player and his daughter. A young man wanted to learn the secret of the ragas. He requested this great musician to take him under his patronage. In return, the master took this promise that this young pupil will marry his daughter, this ugly daughter, when the training will be over. So the man agrees and under her father's tutelage, this ugly daughter and the boy learn to play great music together as a team. The harmonies they create are so beautiful that the girl starts believing in the power of their love. love. The girl actually believes that the boy loves her and he will marry her. The mother begins to prepare for the wedding. But... It turns out that after the boy excelled in the art of music, he abandoned this master and his going to be bride and he eloped and married another woman. Heartbroken, the girl does not know what to do. She vows never to play music again because of which father has brought her to the Narmada River so that, quote, she can understand that I am the bride of music, not a musician. But as it turns out, the girl, the daughter is hopeless and she says, quote, it is an impossible penance that he, my father, demand, demands of me to express desire in my music when I am dead inside. In relationships, you actually belong to the other, right? You connect your emotions with the other and your life with the other. I hope they don't turn shallow in our cases, right? Let's move on to the last story of the River Sutra. It is called the Minstrel Story, okay? This story is again told by Tariq Mia, narrator's friend. So there are two stories told by Tariq Mia. Remember it. What is this story? A few years ago, Tariq Mia met a Naga Baba, a Hindu ascetic. You know about Naga Babas. We have seen them in TV. They braid their hair like Lord Shiva. They don't wear clothes. They smear their body in ashes. They, uh, you know, they sit in graveyards or here and there or anywhere and they pray for their salvation. They pray alone, right? Naga Babas, you must know about them. So basically, Tariq met a Naga Baba a few years ago. And this Naga Baba rescues a little girl whom he names Uma from being sold into prostitution by her father. Basically, there is a festival of Shiva going on. And because of superstitions, many people come and sell their daughters away. Okay. Why? As a tribute to Lord Shiva. Okay. Makes no sense. But then that is how things work. So here Naga Baba rescues this girl and he names her Uma. From then onwards, Uma becomes an ardent companion of the Naga as he teaches he, her as he teaches her songs of the Narmada River. But one day, Baba abandons Uma for further enlightenment. Alone, Uma becomes a river minstrel, basically a singer of the river. She travels to religious festivals and sings the legend of the holy Narmada River. With this, we come to the last chapter of a river sutra. The name of this chapter is The Song of the Narmada. What happens here? 
The narrator is shocked to find out that the Naga Baba who rescued Uma in reality is not a Hindu ascetic. He's a professor. He's an archaeologist whose name is Professor Vivi Shankar. His, he studies, you know, on Narmada River, the legends and superstitions associated with the Narmada River. And the reason he became Naga Baba was because he knew that men like Uma's father would try to leave their young daughters in the brothel as some kind of superstitious offering to the Shiva, to Lord Shiva. And this professor currently is staying at narrator's rest house. And he has summoned Uma to come to the rest house and sing with him the song of the Narmada. How does this book end? How does the river, uh, river Sutra end? Surprised, narrator contemplates about his own life. He hears about so many tales and he feels that if he ever leaves this rest house, he stops meeting the people like he does right now. What will he do? Will he become a Naga Baba or will he sacrifice himself to the Narmada? We don't know. Here we are done with A River Sutra by Gita Mehta. I loved it. Hope you did too. This is Hina from Team Test and I'm sure you have subscribed to our channel. If you haven't, kindly do it right now. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.